favorite segment, the fans on where we're discussing international football with regards to, you know, the trending headlines and the fixtures for the weekend. English Premier League is back in action this particular afternoon. Four matches on card. Arsenal against Fulham in an early kickoff tie. My guy Scott Parker, of course, in charge of Fulham. How about he cause an upset against these guys who are bragging of having, you know, a good jersey in time. But at least good for them. How about United supporters I'm hosting this particular afternoon? Joe Saina and Robert Osoro. I'm told they are being trolled over their zebra crossing jersey. What's up, man? You can't advise your team to get some, you know? If I had that push whereby I can have a word with the management, I think that just is a bit of a disappointment. It is a disappointment. Um, <laughs> we, we can't hide away. The jersey is abysmal. I, no, 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 no. I you think, have been wondering. You I, I think know, United have been wondering, have been wondering. If, if it was the shorts that were black mm -hmm. and then the jersey was that striped, yeah. that's fine. But everything is striped. I've been wondering how yeah. come this man is not donning a United jersey. You know, he's too. They no, no, no. Of I, I think if, if there was one department in Manchester that has made the Manchester start the season with the real talk, has got to be the marketing department. Because that it's is a horrible way. department for United. No, it no. is the best. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, so it might work about it. Uh, yeah. in, in positive favor for the team. Yes, if, they're yeah. going, if you're going to get more, they're going to get more followers because yes. people still want to know when is the day they'll wear that official thing. Yes, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. That jersey, uh -huh. all those people joining in. So commercially, yeah. it, it creates an awareness. You know, good publicity, bad publicity, it's still publicity. So I think it works well for them. So but publicity is wearing, publicity. But in, in terms of wearing that t-shirt, my friend, <laughs> uh, no, in Swahili, I think they say ni, ni patikane ni or something like that. It, it can't happen. <laughs> People will get used to it. Uh, you remember the Nigerian jersey at World Cup? Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was a proper jersey. No, that was a good jersey. You well, can't compare the Nigerian jersey to what we must The zebra jersey. Hard kit. And it's your son, Robert. I don't want you to get into trouble with uh, some of our commentators on the show. You know, Yvonne Namoyi, Sadai had support of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. So when she gets to listen that you are uh, brushing off <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> You wouldn't be <laughs> in the same book. <laughs> 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 look at Marcus Rashford. He's not happy that jersey. He's I'm not going to give you the first three I'm that, I'm that jersey. Said, look, look, the jersey is not bad, Leo. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think today you're in denial. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so, straight into what is happening this particular afternoon. Early kickoff day, Arsenal against Fulham. Scott Parker, the big man I loved yes. uh, during his professional football. Of course, he featured for yes. West Ham, and at some point, you know, the Reliance, the national team, he didn't get immense mm -hmm. playing time for the national team because of, you know, that stiff competition. Yes. He, in the midfield options, there was Frank Lampard, Steven mm -hmm. Gerrard, yeah. you know, in Hargreaves, Michael Carrick, Paul Scholes. Yeah. But what do you make of their promotion and their uh, huge assignment this particular afternoon? Good one. Uh, before I talk about that, I'll say the story goes that if, if the coaches back then had allowed Scott Parker to be in that midfield, the England golden generation could have won everything. Wow. That's debatable, man. That's a very bold statement. That's debatable. But you look at that midfield, that Scott, Lampard, Gerard. what did they do? And then they never gave Carrick and Scott Parker a chance to be in that midfield. If they were in that midfield, then the golden generation of England could have. Okay, now, away from that, I like Scott Parker because he, he, he was relegated two years ago, in 2018. Fulham was relegated. It was his also first year in management. But he went down there, fought in the championship, and he's back with the same, same players he had uh, back then. And now with a few kind of signings, I think they are going to give us you know, a run for their money today because I saw the press conference of Scott. It was... Our target is to stay in the Premier League. It has to be. That yeah. has to be the target because you remember in that season, the 2018 season, they went out and bought so many players. Yes. So many players that they could not be able to gel them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. what happened? They got relegated immediately. Yeah. So now, after they went to the championship, all those high stick players were sold. Yes. And the real players who want to play for the club, who want to don that jersey and say, you know what, I want to take this club back to the Premier League, are the ones who are now in the Premier League with them. Yeah. That, has, that, that being said, 
their caution would be yes. Even if they want to stay in the Premier League, they need to gather the points. Yeah. You know, you don't want to start a situation whereby already the media is, is pushing the idea that you're going to be relegated, uh -huh. you're going to be, you know, struggling even to make out of the top, out yes. of the bottom five. Yeah. So what they need to do is start off as they mean in business. Now, in terms of them having Arsenal this afternoon, Arsenal again has had this resurgence that not many clubs have seen in recent times. You know, yeah. if, they, if they win the, the FA Cup, they come and win the Community Shield. Yes. And yes, fellow, fe fellow uh, pundits and fellow analysts will say those are not major cups, but, but, and I say again, it is a stepping stone. And if you think about it, <laughs> yeah. and then now you go forward and look at the signings, you go forward and look at the new contract for Aubameyang, yes. does Aubameyang guarantee you the premiership? Does Aubameyang guarantee you top four to mm -hmm. qualify for Europe? Yes. Europe's elite? <coughs> I think you know, and, and, and uh, just talking, so much pressure on that Talking one about player. that particular yeah. clash, I think the squad sheets are out mm. and Mikel Ateta looks like he wants this thing mm. uh, direly because he has started all his big guns. Mm. Aubameyang, Lacazette and William up front. It's a trio in terms of attacking department. Then the new signing, Gabriel, mm -hmm. who is now the centre-back, being assisted by Rob Holding mm -hmm. and Kieran Tiene. Mm -hmm. Does, do, does that look terrifying against Fulham? If you think about it, that defense has actually been improved because now you have you don't have Luis starting up. You have Rob Holding, who is essentially a ball-playing defender, and Gabriel, who will hold the mm -hmm. defensive line. But my curiosity would be the link-up between William and Aubameyang. Not yeah. even because Lacazette is on the other wing. Yeah. William and Aubameyang, getting yeah. those balls to Aubameyang. Whether it's crossing them, whether he'll cut inside like he normally yeah. used to do at Chelsea, yeah. we need to de to see how he will play today. You know what? In the name of banter, when uh, United was dominating, winning the FA Cup and the Community Shield, they used to call that cup a plate and all that. Mm. Now that Arsenal has and they are happy, now they have realized that a trophy is a trophy. But again, if you think about it, and I'm going to be the partisan to the idea that they beat Liverpool. Yeah. They beat Liverpool. Liverpool yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. whether, whether it was for a cup or not for a cup, yeah. Liverpool put the best team yeah. forward yeah. And, li and Arsenal went there and defeated them. Yeah. So by no means is it a small is it a small feat. It's actually a big feat. And if they can take the same momentum yes. through the next three games, I'm telling you, Arsenal this season, if they put their house in order, and that's where a tactician like Mikel Atete is there, I believe they can squeeze into the top four. Not squeeze, and actually finish for, in the top for four. For them, that and is their target because they have missed the top four, I think, uh, in the last four seasons. Yes, they that have, is they have not their played target, the of course, this Champions particular League. season. Yeah. So, Fulham uh, is the newly promoted side. And, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of teams getting promoted, mm. but eventually they get relegated again. Can they defy all odds and be a mainstay like Sheffield did under Chris Wilder last season? Remember last season, uh, Sheffield United were told that they will not make it through the, yes. pre through the Premier League and they'll be relegated. Yeah. Even before Christmas, they'll be already in the bottom three. Yeah. But the idea is the cohesion of the players. Mm -hmm. The self-belief that we came from the hardest league in the world, yes. which I do believe is a championship, yeah. coming into the Premier League, take away the reputation of other players and other teams, take away the reputation of teams in the Premier League and play to the basics and understand that we are doing this for the coach, for the management, for the fans, for the club. Uh, if, if Fulham can do that, yeah. they would be okay. If Fulham can do that, they will be okay. Can yes. they start on a good note against Arsenal this particular afternoon? Yes, now, they can. As you know, football fans always say it, Ogopali mm -hmm. kickoff. Well, it can go either way. It can go either way. Yes. Or but, against your what expectations. I believe, today, the blueprint for Liverpool, for, sorry, for Fulham is quite simple. Play to your strengths, okay? Your strengths is, and has always been, even if you look at the last few games they played at the championship, was possessing that, that ball. Antagonize for, uh, Arsenal, because Arsenal will want to play to their strengths, which is counter-attack. Make sure they don't get that ball. And once they play on the high line, because I can guarantee you today, Holding and Gabriel will play on the high line. Get them on the counter-attack. William... You know, some people calling him a reject. He's been in sparkling form for his former employers, Chelsea, uh, at the Stamford Bridge. And of course, you know, Arsenal shocked a lot of uh, football fans when they you know, went for his signature and indeed they acquired his services. How resourceful is it to Arsenal well, you this see, season? I, I, I think also 
William is uh, one of the most experienced players in the Premier League at the moment. You get him from Chelsea to your team. Arsenal was a young squad. You need to get players who can be leaders on the game, in the field of play. You need leaders in that game and William brings that. And also players who have won and they know what it means to win, who can walk the journey with these young players. And that's what the kind of things that William brings onto the game. And then, even at the age of 30, you have not seen William go down. His intensity is still up there. His hunger for goals is still up there. And he wants to score. And who wants to leave London at the end of the day? It's a good place <laughs> to stay. London is a good place <laughs> to stay indeed. So, of course, kickoff uh, of English Premier League this particular afternoon. Four matches on card, just like I had indicated to you. Early kickoff one being... Arsenal against Fulham. Of course, team sheets are already out. Other matches, of course, will take place later on during the day. But a few fixtures, of course, beating United against Burnley, being postponed. Mm -hmm. Things related for next weekend. Yeah. But glad that, you know, EPL is back. A lot of Kenyans were missing this. Are you gearing up for the read? I think the, the uniqueness right now is the promoted teams. First of all, if you look at a fixture like Liverpool versus Leeds, it's champions versus champions. Yeah. Okay, champions of the championship and the Premier League champions. I think if you look at the history, especially towards the late 70s to early 80s, this resurgence of Leeds winning the, the then Championship Cup, which, was, which is the UEFA Champions League, they're winning the League One, which is now the Premier League, against the dominance of Liverpool then. Now bring that full circle and then start it all over again. That will be quite interesting. And it will be also quite uh, enjoyable to find out that there will be some few Leeds fans, who, Kenyan Leeds fans, who will be enjoying such games. Then the battle of the top four, which we have to address. We, we can't leave it like that. Personally, I don't believe Liverpool, Liverpool can be, win before, the before, Premier League before this we do the battle of the... I want to add on Leeds United. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, Marcelo Biesla has, has come to Leeds United. And for a very long time, he has been... Uh, there's that debate of good coaches who don't show with the trophies. You no know, managers are considered with tro how many trophies you have and all that. Marcelo Biesla is one coach who doesn't come with trophy, uh, trophy ladder and uh, CV. I think he has, I think, four trophies to an Olympic gold medal with uh, Argentina, World Cup finalist with Argentina, and I think two Argentina league titles back home. I uh, came to Spain and all that. But look at his disciples. The likes of Pep Guardiola give their allegiance to Marcelo Biesla. Mauricio Pochettino give their allegiance to Marcelo Biesla. There's a coach who has come to Leeds United and has introduced formations people have never seen before. He plays a 3-1-3 three, three, three kind of formation. This comes, playing come. in the championship, which yeah. is little known league, of course not in public domain as it is with the English Premier League. At some point being rated alongside Hassan Wenger, Sir Alex yeah. Ferguson no. as you know world class managers. I don't know of how significant will it be for Bielsa to lead United in the 2020-2021 English Premier League campaign. You see now the problem with the Premier League is that the pressure that comes even towards Christmas, whereby you don't have the right points that can lead you not to rele relegation, relegation, but to safety. So Bielsa is known as a tactician, man marking, mm -hmm. keeping the ball, at a sudden having this weird and very fast counter, mm -hmm. an assimilation of a formation whereby it can lead from a 3-1, 4-1, that can lead to still a 4-1-5, no, sorry, 4-5-1. Again, when it comes to the defense. Now, if you think about it, all those dynamics can antagonize some games, some, some teams. For example, today, Liverpool. Liverpool are known for the quick quick counter, high pressing. If Marcelo applies that, count, that tactic, whereby he has the four behind, he has the five in midfield and one attack, and gets up all to the attacker, I can guarantee you this, that Bielsa will shock this Premier League season. But, a caution to Leeds, but... If the points don't start generating, I don't think Bielsa will be in at the end of the season. Crystal Palace up against uh, Southampton, the Saints, big man, you know, Roy Hogson. Yes. Still at his age in English Premier League and competing against, you know, the young talents in mm. 
eh, Mikel Arteta, Frank Lampard, Oleguna Solsha, now yeah. Scott Parker joining the bandwagon. How is it like for Crystal Palace, you know, considering that they were working hard to keep Wilfred Zaha, whom they kept, despite, you know, his linkage to teams like Paris and Germain mm -hmm. and Tottenham Hotspur, against a Southampton side that, you know, has had players who've been at the Saints for quite long, the likes of Redmond, Ward Prowse, yeah. and now Danny Inks, who scored several goals last season. I, I think uh, uh, Crystal Palace and Southampton are, have managed to keep some of their best players. Uh, they haven't moved, uh, and, they, and they have not been vocal in the transfer window. For them, it's a mid-table game. I think for them, the big one is yes. who starts at the front foot. Yeah. The first game of the season for the two teams matters very much because you don't want a situation where Crystal Palace will be fighting off the relegation times when they actually had the chance to be not fighting in that and Southampton the same, same thing. So for them it's a mid-table clash but the first one with the three points will matter to him more than the losing team. And then if you look at the signings that they've made, yeah. they've, they've got Mishi Batuai on loan again from Chelsea. So you're looking at the over-reliance that yes. last season uh, Crystal Palace had with Jordan Ayew, where Jordan Ayew was, you know, basically the goal scorer. They had this idea of using Benteke to create the goals, having one tall, lengthy striker and having another fast striker in Jordan Ayew, but that did not work. So Michi Batuai coming in and actually alleviating that pressure from Jordan Ayew would be important. Yes. The link up with Wilfred Zaha also is something to admire about. As for Southampton, Southampton did a marvel towards the end of the season whereby they really picked up the points. Can they go this season again? We have always said Southampton has this generation whereby in every two seasons they come up with three good players and again they are sold. Yeah. You can't keep doing that. Very few teams have tried that. Yeah. Ajax right now again have to start rebuilding because they have sold so many people. So from in the same scratch. instance, from scratch again. So in the same instance, Southampton has to be very careful this season. But for the game today, you know, you'd pit, uh, you know, Crystal Palace to pick up points. Mm. Definitely. Of course, looking forward to English Premier League kickoff this particular afternoon. Three matches on card. Early kickoff already ongoing tie. Arsenal up against Fulham, the newly promoted. Then later on, round 5.30, Crystal Palace against Southampton. And late kickoff tie, beating, you know, the champions playing against uh, fellow champions. Of course, EPL winners against, you know, the triumphants of Skybet Championship. Liverpool against Leeds respectively. Away from that, uh, we're going to speak about, you know, this man, aged at 35, defying all odds to smash records. Mm. He has smashed 11 records and stats this particular season, scoring 100 goal for Portugal in international football during UEFA Nations League. We lack words to describe Cristiano Ronaldo, do you? I th he's a maverick. I've always sat here and said he's a maverick. We don't agree sometimes with you know, certain ways that teams play with him. For mm -hmm. example, at some point Juventus puts him on the wing. Sometimes he should be a striker. But what he has done in Portugal is a marvel. I think the only other players that now are high scorers is a Iranian striker who has 109 goals. Yes. And now, and then, and then there's one more, and then I think it's him. So if you look at it from that standpoint, at 35 years old, I still believe he has three more seasons. <laughs> I still believe he can even... He Define. will play in Qatar yeah. for 2022 World Cup. Yes, he will. He will play in Qatar. And I believe the longevity that Cristiano Ronaldo shows right now, as compared to other strikers like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, as Jamie Vardy going in right now at 33, 34. You're looking at Messi, although he's not a striker, but you're looking at that longevity of, of, of playing at the highest level and still producing. Cristiano is going to surpass them. I'm always in tears. Not seeing my all-time favorite, you know, there are players who played best football, but I think I've developed, you know, unwavering love for Wayne Mark Rooney. You know, he came into public limelight, I think at 16, 17, yes. when playing for Everton, but he left two way early before hitting 30. And, you know, he's in that generation of Cristiano Ronaldo, while Ronaldo is doing what he's doing while Rooney quit international football still playing professional football, doing very well though, but uh -huh. not in a league that is recognized globally. I don't know. What normally happens? What are the permutations? Uh, I, I think also age catches up with you in a way. For Cristiano Ronaldo, you realize that he has worked on his body physique that you forget his age. And other players like Wayne Rooney, 
they could not get uh, to that level of physicality with their bodies and everything. And you remember when Rooney became a loyal player when he joined Manchester United. There was a link, there was a big link up for him to join Cristiano in Real Madrid. Even Ronaldo he himself insisting yeah. he wanted Rooney at Madrid. Yeah, at Madrid. So you could have seen the best of the best at their level, but Rooney stayed with the United and also broke all the records at Manchester United, being the goal scoring records and all that. But then, with Cristiano Ronaldo, he added that philosophy of hard work plus talent. It's not all about talent in the field of play. Hard work also matters, and that's what Cristiano Ronaldo did. You look at his body physique at the moment, he looks like a 27-year-old. Mm. Is that the aspect that he, you know, he defeats Lionel Messi? You know the comparison between the two <laughs> has been on another level, and people have failed to agree on who is you know, the goat between the two. But I think when it comes to international football, Ronaldo has done exceptionally well yes we, we, we cannot dispute that yeah. i mean if you look at what ronaldo has done with portugal versus what messi has done with argentina there's no comparison to yeah. be honest so if you're going to say pound for pound who's the best player in the world inclusive of international appearances and how they have played internationally you would put cristiano in front of messi i, I think uh, for that conversation it will be go down to preference because you talk about records, you talk about what all of them have done that. Mm. Now, on the international stage, I think Argentina became our Paris Saint-Germain in the final of this UEFA Champions League. Mm -hmm. You remember the final with Argentina lost, the, I think, to Germany. It was all about Argentina not becoming a team. They were a bunch of world-class stars who have congregated to be the Argentina national team, yet Portugal came, uh, when they were winning the Nations League, they came as a team. When they were getting to the World Cup semi-finals, they came as a team. And that is what has failed oh. Lionel Messi on the international stage. Wow, an update immediately coming in through. Uh, in an early kick of tie, Arsenal already ahead through Alexander Lacazette, of course, against Fulham. Fulham looks like they have a long day. To, you know, they have to against Arsenal. It's, it's a fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so, you look at, you know, Arsenal has just, uh, Arsenal just defeated Liverpool as, yes. we, as we talk. So, mm -hmm. against Fulham, Arsenal want to put a mark across that. Yeah. This season, we are going to be in the top four. Yeah. And this is, some, this is a clear sign. You know, for especially for someone like Lacazette to score, and everyone was expecting either Aubameyang, the yes. new boys coming in, William. But for Lacazette, I think this is a good start for him. Arsenal winning that Community Shield, mm. you start the season on a high. In that now, what what else are you fighting for? Actually, to go back to that level of last season, yeah. while matches were being played. Uh, uh, behind, you know, closed Indoors. doors. Yeah. You know, they did very well. Yeah. Beaten almost every big giant in English Premier League, Manchester City, Liverpool, United, United Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh my yeah. goodness. They the defeated almost everyone. So that gave them morale. Yes. Yeah. And then the funny thing, if you realize, Marcelo Bielsa said two days ago, Anfield without fans mm. is just not the same. Yeah. Actually, yeah. There's something true. about Liverpool playing towards the strength of their fans. fans yeah. Not having fans at Anfield mm -hmm. this season, uh, hopefully, too, hopefully it won't be too many matches, but that's going to affect them as champions. Very much. I, actually, mo most, uh, most uh, former players usually say the atmosphere at Anfield will either scare you away mm. or make you play one of the best games you've ever. ever played in football. And them not being in that stadium today, one of the loudest stadiums in the world with, I think, 40,000 capacity. Mm. So, going to be war. So, heading into transfers in Europe, you know, uh, the window is almost getting closed, right? Yeah. October 5th. Mm. October 5th, yeah. the window will be getting closed in terms of those teams, clubs looking forward to bolster their squads mm. yes. uh, ahead of the league kickoff. Of course, EPL has already started commenced yeah. today. I don't know, gentlemen, mm. going by the winners and losers of transfers we've seen even you know rumors and gossip a friend of mine was telling me that barcelona ronald kuman 1992 champions league winner with barcelona is turning the club into you know a netherlands training camp by just going for the average players i don't know what he meant memphis depay 
is being linked with Barcelona and so is Gigi with Adam of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What has captured your attention in terms of transfers? I think for me, from the, Europe? the winners right now in Europe in terms of transfers has to be Chelsea. Yeah. Because Chelsea has beefed up all the places they could have beefed Departments. up. Departments. Last season, where they couldn't because they were banned. Yeah. Okay. If you're looking at, if you look at attack, Warner, Z Ziyad, if you come to the defense, you have Sa. Ben Chilwell. You have Thiago Silva. You have Ben Chilwell. If they can sort Ariza Balaga's situation as a goalkeeper, yeah. they're going to be a force to be right. But I think what, what most people are looking forward to is how Frank Lampard will feel. Mm. Now, uh, all those players. Results, it's, you, you, remember, you remember the case of Juad Ramos at uh, Tottenham? Yes. Performed well, very well with Sevilla. Get a chance to come to Tottenham. But I think 12 players at a go mm. never worked with them and performed. Yeah, I think it was sacked, I think, in the seventh match, and Harry Redknapp came in and made Tottenham what it is. Okay, we don't know if that is what can happen to Frank Lampard, but he has actually made signings that can scare any team away. And I also believe that yeah. he had enough time to scout these players yes. because he was banned from transfers the whole of last season. So he had enough time for the scouts to go out and look at these players individually. You know, Ziatek from Ajax, for example. Yeah. If you look at Sa as a free transfer, Thiago Silva, people said Thiago Silva was a, was, a, was a quick buy, was a scare buy. I don't think it was a scare buy. I think he was scouted. Ben Chilwell, right now regarded the best left back in England. But how come Chelsea fans said that that's not the left back they wanted? I well, don't know well, who they prefer. Fans, fans, fans will always have an opinion. Even I, I will have an opinion. Yeah. I will have an opinion of saying we should have gone for Marcel or maybe someone who's more experienced. Yeah. But they went for Ben Chilwell. Now let's look at the losers. A loser for me would be Leicester City. Replacing Ben Chilwell. Yes, they have signed a left back from Atalanta. But will he bring the same intensity that Ben Chilwell did? Secondly, a striker. Ke Inacho is not the direct replacement of Vardy. Vardy is going to be 34. He is going to score goals, but at some point, if he gets injured, who's going to replace Vardy? No, you're, you're pushing, trying, you're you're pushing trying, for a top five. You are trying to be of a defensive of United. For me, United will be losers because mm -hmm. For them to compete very well in Europe elite club competition, considering they have qualified for Champions League football, and you've seen how Champions League is playing, how the likes of Bayern Munich, how the likes of uh, PSG are playing. A player like Marco Verratti at PSG is not getting regular playing football, and that is immense potential. While United, look at their midfield. I think they have improved a little bit by bringing Van de Beek, who will now play alongside Pogba with Bruno Fernandes, uh, at the supply end, but now their defense shambles. Upemekan was linked with them, he extended his contract stay at Leipzig. No, the, the tra play, transfer is not over yet. Who will play mm. at you know the middle pack of defense for United? Harry Maguire is overrated English defender. Mm -hmm. Chris Molling, I hear. There are talks for his contract extension at AC Roma. Yes. Roma want to make actually a, con a, a the, Actually, the, a there's, a there's no way Smalling is coming back to United. I prefer Smalling to come back. No, 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 no. I, I think he has had a good season at Roma. United still have options at the back. Uh, they have got Maguire, they have got Bailey, they have got Lindelof. Bailey is injury prone. Yeah, but now Bailey is injury prone and they say that Lindelof is not that. So he needs one. Uh, complete center back that's where they had gone for Upemecano. him signing another contract with the Leipzig uh, they might want his value to go up because mm -hmm. of business and all that even the Leipzig manager himself said that there's a possibility of him leaving and then there's a United saying he can sign but still stay there for one mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. and then still come back in. Jadon Sancho is he coming back a uh, big possibility also I think was it yesterday? Yeah. The, so there was a breakthrough. There was a breakthrough, in talks. but now, uh -huh. and I sat here two uh -huh. weeks ago and I talked to you about this exit of star star players who can come and bolster the squad yeah. at Barcelona. I believe Umtiti still has the quality to be a very good centre back. Yes. The unfortunate pairing of him and Pique, where Pique has a couple of mistakes, and then the whole 
defenses. Actually, he's not paired. He's not paired alongside PK. PK is paired alongside Lengle. Yeah, but so which means you know, Omtiti has got no place Omtiti, at Camp Nou. No, no, no. Omtiti was injured. That's yes. why he could not play yeah. that game. Okay, he actually had a COVID scare. But if you look at the season, he's normally paired with PK. Yes. I still think Omtiti, who has been, who has requested a transfer from Barcelona. I still think you can get him for a very good price. He played because very well exits. in 2018 World Cup for France, right? He is a World Cup winner with France, exactly. man. You understand? Yeah. So it's just the way he can be. And he's a left and playing centre back. Yes. How he can come and link up with Maguire, whether you like it or not, Maxwell. The price tag on Maguire was 80 million. <laughs> Overrated. They were not going. This is not Barcelona <laughs> where we are going to put an 80 million person on the bench. No, 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 no. You can't do that. So you see, you as a get, sympathizer for United. <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. It's all, it's all <laughs> going to be possible because huh? there's also the idea of going for Soyonsu at Leicester. Leicester refused. Now let's be objective. Because now Leicester said, "How can you sign two of our best left backs, uh, centre backs, in two seasons?" Let's be objective and realistic. Okay. Harry Maguire left Leicester. He was replaced by Soyonchu, who was who is a better defender between the two. If you look at the performances of both teams after Soyonchu joined Leicester City, you'd pick Soyonchu. Why? Because Leicester City not only came up and also over, overtook uh, Manchester United at some point, but their defense even became more better than what Harry Maguire was giving out his output. So yes, if you're going to look at it objectively, Soyonchu did a better job last season as compared to Harry Maguire. Debatable indeed. Of course, we're winding up. UEFA Nations League, we enjoyed great footballing action in the last uh, two weeks of, you know, national teams. England looks like they're here to keep disappointing me against Iceland. I will usually say England is not an international team. There's a bunch of stars who come together to play <laughs> football. <laughs> wrong tactics by uh, Southgate. I think no, Southgate also three at the back. Yeah. something that they've, they've not been used to, and playing from the back again mm. and trying to play with a false number nine. You, you're not trying to be Spain. Yeah, I yeah. think so that game tactically he was not. He was Sa not Southgate nice. also, I think he wanted to impress many people calling everyone, yes. all these young kids, mm. and all that. Mm. You just need to stick with your core group. You need to stick, you see the way Portugal, the yes. Portuguese manager has done it. He has stuck with his core group in that he can bring in Joao Felix just to give him a test of international I was, football. I was surprised and Joao all that. Coutinho still plays for Portugal. Yeah, so you see. That age, vast yeah, experience. And all that. So that, that is what England should do. He's calling players who is not going to give a chance at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, coming on to the national team. How do you rate Phil Foden? At the midfield, he was suspended alongside Mason Greenwood after misbehaving. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, against their mis misfortunes of being young boys who want to enjoy their, you know, young life, you look at it as, can he replace David Silva, though? Which at is City. City. And that's, that's those two positions, and I talked about them, that creative playmaker and central defense that company and now Silva have left, yeah. those positions need to be filled. It's going to be a problem this season. But, 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 if, but for City, I think people are not seeing it. They signed Ake. Nathaniel. Yes, Nathaniel Ake in that... Uh, yeah, even if they don't get any centre-back. Long, long term, Ake, yes, but not short term. Ake and Laporte in they that centre-back is pair. a very good pairing. I but can tell you. a pairing that will give you the premiership? It see? can. It can give I you the premiership. So. I think for uh, long term, Ake, yes. Ake, short term now, no. Ake and Laporte in that... Very good. Then you have Walker and Mendy on that side. Very good for you. Foden, is the, he's got big shoes to fill. For him to get... And uh, Pep makes good players. He, he grooms players to grow to the best of their capabilities and everything. For Foden, he has shown that... He, he played against Madrid. Mm. He was in the team that knocked Real Madrid out of the Champions League. Mm. So, yes, he's got big shoes to fill. But he has shown that talent. But that also very promising. But yeah. also remember one thing mm. that uh, Pep Guardiola has been known as a four season coach. Yeah. Barcelona very four much. seasons. Mm -hmm. Bayern Munich four seasons. Yes. This is the fourth season at Manchester City. Mm -hmm. If he does not win the Champions League, I don't think he'll start City. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a show. Who, who else do City have to get if they're not getting Pep? <laughs> Allegri has been, has been sitting on the. On the Allegri side. is a loser, man. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> Debatable. Of course, the show is coming for an end. This particular time, 3 o'clock it is, and it's been two hours of, you know, 
fantastic conversation as, as far as matters sports, both local and international is concerned. And it's that time we wrap it up. Of course, it's Saturday, same time, same place. We will be here to take you through what's happening and give you, you know, best of analysis in terms of, you know, English Premier League, which is back on fold, you know, first day. Four matches on card, Arsenal against Fulham and we Arsenal. So far, you know, the leaders as far as that clash is concerned, Alexander Lacazette having put his side ahead. And of course, Josina, thanks for coming through when he was in.